Oh, hi. This week, we're making a Romano Flowers cardigan. I can't believe I've never thought about doing this before because I love color blocking things. Okay, I immediately had to take a cookie break, so here we are. Also, my shop is still full of bees. Less, and also, I know they're not bees, they're wasps. They're yellow jackets. Anyways, I got the idea for this project because I was at a liquidation sale at a Joann's because they were moving locations. I got myself some like really fun quilting cotton Halloween prints, stuff like that. That, but then I saw that there was a fleece remnants bin and it was the really nice anti-pill like blizzard fleece that they have there which is thicker and harder to work with to be honest but is obviously a lot cozier. I've never thought about putting these two colors together in this way but I've been wanting to make more of these like batwing cardigans and it just clicked. Yes we'll have the blue and this like berry red color, berry pink perhaps. This is one of those colors where like, do people call it purple? Do people call it pink? Do people call it red? It's not quite a fuchsia, but it's not not a fuchsia. We'll call it raspberry. I got really excited at the prospect of making a color black cardigan and I could just so clearly picture it in my head and I knew I could make it happen because I've made it happen before and I just got so excited. <laughs> Having done this pattern multiple times before, I knew exactly what kind of yardage I was gonna need. So I I did grab two rolls of the raspberry and then one of this blue. And it is a very specific shade of blue. I don't know what this would be called either, but I really like it and it just feels like Ramona Flowers blue in my brain. So as soon as I got home, I did these sketches where I just have the like outline line work of the pattern saved on my computer from doing this before. So it's really helpful being able to paint fill on whatever drawing program I have access to to mess around with the placement of things. Now that I've got the system of doing fashion sketches, I find it much easier to just test this out ahead of time. And then also I have documentation of having done this because I often forget about projects that I've done until I do like a year end review and kind of recap like, oh shit, I forgot about so many of these because in the grand scheme of the year, I'm making about 50 videos and I am not gonna hold all of those in my brain. And I've been doing this for a lot of years now. I think we are minimum eight years into like sewing nerd being a thing. I, I think it's gonna be more than that now though, which yes, is kind of unfathomable. And I'm still enjoying it. So for once, I feel like I have made some correct life choices. <laughs> anyway, it was the front design that I was kind of wavering on where I didn't know if I wanted to keep it simple and just have the blue and the pink color blocked in big sections, or if I was gonna go that extra step and make it like very obviously subspace bag inspired. Although even if someone isn't familiar with the Scott Pilgrim series, if they saw this cardigan, it would probably just look like something I would have picked out in high school if I wore that style sweater. So I suppose it doesn't even have to be as specific as I'm making it, but I didn't know how deep in the paint to go with this, if that makes sense. So I actually asked my best friend and a couple strangers and some of my coworkers at the brewery the other day, which I was at Rockingham in the first place because there was a raspberry lime Ricky Goza on tap. That was for one of the owner's birthdays. And I have never been sadder to miss out on like a beer release day. And I got the very last like, well, partial pint, I kicked the keg. So I got the very last like pour of it and it wasn't even a full pint glass by then. And it was heaven. But anyway, I kind of like tested the room and showed everybody the two options for the front and got their opinions. And every single person said, go with the stars. It just seemed more fun and it was more exciting to look at. and. Yes, it was more work, but to be honest, I am so much happier with how this turned out and it has also given me some other ideas. I initially started buying fleece to make Pikachu and Totoro onesies and I'm gonna also be workshopping some designs for hats, hooded scarves, perhaps hoodies and maybe open front sweaters like this that are Pikachu and Totoro themed because onesies are so much work and they have to be so specifically sized. Like there's way more measurements that are involved in something like that than a open bat wing cardigan like this or even a hoodie or a hat or a scarf or something like that. It's certainly a big factor in why I've been so focused on making bags for this event I'm doing in September. So it's gonna be a couple weeks out from when this goes out. It's the Granite State Comic Con in Manchester, New Hampshire, and it's the weekend of September 16th, 17th, and 18th. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can buy separate passes. You can buy like a whole weekend one at a little bit of a discounted rate. You're gonna have Mick Foley, who as someone that grew up watching wrestling in the 90s 
is an absolute like hero of mine, but I'll be in the artist alley. Hopefully by the time this video is up, I'll have my table assignment and know where I am. It's not like there's a bad place to be in that convention hall. They really, really are great about supporting local artists. I am feeling more confident about this event where yes, there's some anxiety, I guess, where it's just, am I gonna get enough done in time? and then I'm gonna have to stand in a convention hall for three days and I'm gonna be exhausted like that. That weight is like creeping in, but I don't have that sick to my stomach, imposter syndrome, what am I even doing here type of thing where I feel like I have earned my spot. I mean, I bought a table. I don't think they're gonna argue with it, but previous years I very much felt like I almost shouldn't be there and that has affected everything about the prep for the event, how I behave at the event and like, almost talking people out of buying stuff from me and not giving myself anywhere close to a fair price for things where I wouldn't even make enough back to cover like the table and the cost of all of the materials, let alone paying myself for any of the time. So I know that's not how I'm gonna handle it this year. And I also just know that my stuff is of much better quality than it was. And yes, it's easy to be like, oh, can you believe the garbage I was putting out back then? but I was doing the best with what I had available to me, skill-wise, resource-wise, time-wise, where I feel so much better about my stuff and I know I've grown a lot and I can really like tangibly see the differences and improvements and just how I feel about stuff, although that has come with a lot of therapy and well-calibrated dose of medication, but I feel capable and I'm obviously continuing to do this for a reason. I got my first table, I think 2013 or 2014. And the fact that I continue to do it despite feeling the way I was feeling, makes me know this is what I really want. I feel really good about the stuff I'm making now. And I did feel like I couldn't have done better back then, but I know I'm gonna continue to grow and improve and build my skills and looking back to this year, from future years, I'm starting to realize like, I hope I'm cringing at the stuff I made because that means I'm gonna be that much better after this point. Like I wanna continue getting better. Like I wanna continue leveling up. Is that not the point in life is to just keep learning things? Oh, speaking of learning things, in addition to adding these stars onto the front, which is probably the most annoying shape to cut out if I'm doing like some kind of applique because most other geometric type shapes are kind of self-contained where a star it's like springing out and if something goes a little bit wonky or the tip isn't like completely sharp point and all of them aren't the exact same, it just looks weird and is, yeah, kind of frustrating. But I'm, I'm happy with how this came out. But before I even moved on to the star, I realized like I've never done the slash pocket pattern hack on this particular design and I really wanted to give it a try and figure it out and see how it went together. I had thought that, oh, I must not have cut that pattern piece out and was starting to like dig through the base patterns that come with the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book, because that's where this pattern is from. I cannot recommend Tilly and the Buttons highly enough, regardless of your sewing skill level. It just so vibes with how my brain works. And I know I say this every single time, but like I really, really love her teaching style and her instruction style. The garments themselves in general, I, I like a lot of her designs. Not every single one is for me. Not that they're bad designs, but just not my style. But I just really like making the things from these books. And this one's specifically called the Bertha cardigan. So yeah, I dug out the book and I also have a binder full of all of the patterns from all three Tilly books. So I dug that one out and then realized, right, when I first cut all of these pattern pieces out, I cut out every single one because I didn't know how everything went together. So if there was anything on any of those sheets, I had traced it out in my size and I do not remember there ever being a slash pocket separate pattern piece. And then it occurred to me, right, it kind of lays over the top of the front panel for the cardigan. So it's very likely that I just trace it out, but huh, if we check the book where the instructions are, perhaps that's where I'll find this information. And sure enough, there was a little diagram that just showed like, make the pattern for the pocket off of the front panel pattern. Just draw it in half essentially, and then make sure you leave room to fold over the top once. And it's gonna have the same base seam allowance as the front panel, so you don't need to tweak any of that stuff. So I do have this big roll of artist tracing paper so I just copied all of that out once I drew a line I was happy with and that was 
simple enough to put together. I did also make sure I marked the pattern as soon as I made it because that is my biggest downfall in times like these is I'm rushing through a thing and then especially just kind of a vague shape like this. I don't always remember what the fuck it's for. We're like the star is obviously part of the applique. Also I made the star just by going into MS Paint. They have those like predetermined shapes you can draw out. One of them is a star. I had measured out on the pattern piece, like the paper, using my gridded mat underneath to get a gauge for what size star I was looking for, and I did come up with somewhere around five inches square. I know it's not a square, but somewhere within like a five by five parameter. So I just made the star look even enough to my eye. I didn't super measure anything, and then just made sure it was around the five inch mark on the height and the length. Height and the length. Mm-hmm. Have I ever mentioned how bad I am with directions? <laughs> and man, I have struggled through making myself star patterns before, doing like really intricate angle math and like drawing it out really precisely to get it to look nice. And it's never been fun. And I have dreaded every time I've had to make one. But the fact that I have my own printer now, I've just never had this access in something so simple, so simple, that I can just come up with something on the screen and I don't need to like hold the paper up to it and trace off of it and have wonky lines or anything. I can just print it off and cut it out and then I have a star pattern like absolutely mind-blowing that things like this can be that easy. What a world we live in. I'm starting to get better at not making everything way more overly complicated than it really needs to be. I mean that's still one of my like best skill sets is overcomplicating things but I'm, I'm starting to figure some stuff out. Okay, so then once I had these extra pieces put together for this pattern hack, it was time to cut out everything else from these pieces of fleece that I had. I think I had three different quarter yard or half yard widths. No, it must've been about 18 inches. So we'll call it like half a yard. Just, that's right, it was just under half a yard for each of the rolls. So I had two of the pink and one of the blue and I hardly had any scraps left over. There's enough to like, I'm probably gonna make a hat or something out of it, because I have another specific like design in mind for that, but I wanna noodle around first before I put things on my noodle. Nah, eh, okay. Can you tell I've been by myself all day other than the bees and the Bert? Thankfully, the wasps don't go anywhere fucking near Bert or I would have gotten way more scorched earth before now, where I have taken some steps to like eradicate them, but it is difficult when they are partially inside the house because the heavy duty stuff you can do when they're outside, you cannot do inside. So if any of you have suggestions on how to deal with yellow jackets, other than using some of the external house spray stuff that kind of foams up and putting like traps to like draw them away, I would really like to work in my shop without constantly being paranoid that I'm gonna get dive bombed by these motherfuckers. So once all of that was cut out, which this fleece, as I've mentioned, is kind of a thicker pile, not quite as thick as a Polar Tech fleece, but it, it's up there. The thicker stuff, it's warmer, obviously, and it's completely opaque, where sometimes certain colors of the thinner stuff, you can almost see a little discoloration underneath if you're wearing certain color things underneath it, but I just find it a much more pleasant wearing experience. But in addition to the actual donning of the garment, being better for me. The actual cutting and sewing process is so much more difficult with thicker material. My god, I did only break one needle, thankfully, but it was it was a tricky time. So as with many types of sewing, a lot of times if you have any kind of detail work going on, you kind of have to do that finesse finishing bit first because I wasn't going to be sewing the star through all of the layers. It was just going on the outside of the pocket so I needed to just sew that layer alone. So the very first thing that I did was attach it. My plan initially was to use a zigzag stitch. Then I realized I think it'll look a lot nicer if I just do a straight stitch with my edge stitching foot, which I have gotten very well acquainted with during all of my bag making stints recently. It's a foot I never used before. And then there was one day I finally just like sat down and looked through and made myself use most of the feet that came with my sewing machine. And I'm very thankful that I did because Yes, you can get a really close top stitching edge in other ways with just a normal foot. And sometimes I do need like my walking foot on there and I can't do this kind of stuff with it, but the ease with which I can get a really, really close edge stitch consistently is pretty great. So I really like this foot now. And I think that gave the best finish for the little stars on the pockets. Ooh, and I did decide to follow the suggestion in the Tilly book, which 
I only just tried for the first time in the florally Nightmare Before Christmas wrap dress that I made a couple weeks ago where I reinforced the edge of the pockets, like the opening of the pockets on that dress with some grosgrain ribbon. And it genuinely makes a difference. Like I can tell while I'm wearing it that that is not drooping as much and is much more structurally integral or has better structural integrity. That sounds right because I have that extra little bit of support there. So I just cut a length to go along that top edge of the pocket piece. And then yeah, just started doing like the base assembly of things. I did all like the prep stages because I started with the pink thread. I also basted the hem band and the neck band and those types of prep steps that you need to do before you actually start assembling all the pieces together. And I did kind of just go into hyper focus zone where I didn't even realize how long I had been working on the project until my alarm went off at 1 p.m. and I was just like, holy shit, how did we get here? <laughs> which means I was really, really into the project. I kind of love when that happens because it just means I am so in it. And I honestly haven't had that happen in my own sewing room in a long time. So part of that is I've been challenging myself a lot more recently with just more difficult patterns and I've had to think actively a lot more and you can't, you know, kind of dissociate while you're doing that. Where once I was in the groove of sewing this cause kind of muscle memory kicked in almost and it just went together and, it was kind of a pain in the dick to sew. I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out what the fuck was going on with my machine skipping some of the zigzag stitches. I tried a new needle. I tried different kinds of needles because I did finally buy like a Microtex needle because those are super sharp and super small, which I have reserved for like working on velvet and really tightly woven satins and things like that. But that didn't stop the issue. Ballpoint needle didn't stop the issue. Just switching to a brand new universal needle didn't stop the issue. Then finally I realized the machine couldn't handle doing a wide zigzag stitch with this amount of bulk because it just, it was missing so many stitches in a row where one or two along the way is not gonna make a garment fall apart, but there were like gaps in the stitching and I couldn't stand for that, but I needed it to stretch so I couldn't just do a straight stitch. Finally, I did enough troubleshooting that I got it down to just, it needed to be a narrower zigzag and then it worked beautifully. My machine almost never skips stitches unless like something else is going on. I rethreaded everything. I changed the weight of the thread on both the bobbin and the top thread in multiple different ways and still, was having trouble and then yeah finally just narrowed the width of the zigzag and it was totally fine after that <laughs> which i'm glad it was a simple resolution and i did finally figure out because otherwise it would have been driving me nuts and i would think about having to get it serviced or something but no i did it my goddamn self and for everything other than the edge stitching on the start and the front i did use my walking foot because that's a lot more helpful for getting bulky and stretchy material through which this fleece both apply so that was really helpful and i don't know that i would have gone through this holding thing without that foot being on there biggest game changer in my sewing between that and an iron which i didn't need to use for this at all because it doesn't really wrinkle is fleece. You can literally just crumple it up in a ball for five years and take it out and it's gonna be just as unwrinkled as it was when it first came off the bolt. Oh, in addition to my regular sewing machine, I did use my serger for a lot of stuff. Now I have like dark intense blue and dark intense red thread, but I didn't wanna use that for assembling this because neither of them matched the colors I was using very well. And I didn't want something so extreme towards one and not the other when almost every seam was gonna have both going on. So I did decide on using a gray thread because that seemed the most neutral. This is also why I ended up top stitching the seam allowance off to one side on almost every seam was to help that not stick out and show anywhere. Oh, and probably worth mentioning, when I was putting the pockets together and adding the stars onto it, I did take one of the pocket pieces, line up the star where I wanted it to be, pin that in place, then I laid the other star right sides together on top. And just because of how like slapdash I put this together, you know, if a star is not oriented the exact same way, sometimes it'll look a little wonky. So I made sure it was like the same top point for both of them from when I originally cut it out. And then I laid the other pocket piece right sides together on top of that and then slid a pin just through that top star and top pocket so that it was a perfect mirror of the first set that I did. Instead of trying to like measure it out or eyeball it, I wanted to make it look even and this seemed like the best way to go about it. Obviously there's many options you could do to make this happen, but this is what I settled on and I really like how it worked. Oh, for fuck's sake, I thought the bees were coming in here. 
but it's just a really loud whiny motorcycle like way off in the distance. That scared the shit out of me. I thought they were just like infiltrating my bedroom to take over because they're mad about me. Infiltrating their shit. Everything's fine. I think that covers pretty much everything. Oh, I was debating making the cuffs just like normal ass cuffs. I have doubled the length of these on the pattern because everything's always too short for me. And I personally really like having the option of having little thummy holes. Last year I did a whole series on making myself some like long sleeve shirts and like lightweight sweaters. And there's a whole specific video on how to turn a regular folded over cuff into one with a thumb hole. So I'll put that up here if you wanna watch. But yeah, I don't know if it's just because I was in middle school and high school during the early to mid 2000s, but this is very much just a comfort thing for me is having long cuffs with little thummy holes. It's like I'm hiding my hands in a sleeping bag or something. And I thought it would just be one extra nice feature to have, like with deciding to go with the slash pockets on here and adding the little star detail. Just another little thing that is good to practice. And I think keeping something like that in mind when I'm putting designs together to sell at events. That's the kind of stuff that's like that that extra little above and beyond bit. The only thing I really don't like about adding the thumb holes is that you have to basically like go back in and hand sew the two layers together. Otherwise it's going to look like shit. So I don't like that it guarantees that I have to hand sew. You can do it by machine and I tried, but it wasn't looking very clean just because there's so much bulk to this fabric as I have mentioned 1000 times already. But yeah, not the end of the world. I do enjoy hand sewing once I'm doing it, but when there's something that's entirely by machine and then I have like a little bit of hand sewing, I'm like, ugh, the worst. Okay, I think that for real covers everything. Now I just really badly want to watch Scott Pilgrim vs. the World again and reread those comics, but <sighs> I'm just determined to have a heart attack today. Okay, of course, now that I have handled a phone call, I do not recall where I was at, where I, th I think I covered all the bases and I'm just excited about events coming up and making like nerdy specific things because I've spent a lot of my time just skill building, right? Which is certainly not mutually exclusive from making nerdy stuff, but I feel like when I started all of this, it's called Sewing Nerd for a reason. I would make like very nerd inspired, whatever the thing is and like, not, I, I don't know that I've ever tried to fully replicate things. Like I'm not about screen accuracy. I like when something evokes a particular piece of media. You know what I mean? I think that gets the job across where I don't like stressing about details that I don't want to put together, where I want to put like my own spin on things. I absolutely adore and admire people that can get screen accurate shit done. It's just not where my interests lie. So I like doing stuff like this cardigan a lot more. And I think I'm getting to a better place of meshing the two, like making better quality garments for myself that I'm actually going to wear while also introducing nerdery to the project in a more organic way. I think it felt a little forced before. And maybe not forced. I was just like, trying to make it happen. Is that not what forced means? Oh boy. Anyways, you get what I'm saying. Since I was able to take last week off and that is entirely due to everyone over on Patreon, I would like to thank you all from the deep dark depths of my heart for letting that kind of thing happen and letting me have a budget for going to a liquidation sale at a Joann's and picking out fabric like this. I get to have these resources available to me, both like the financial, but also the time, which greatly improves my mental health, which also allows me to come up with better ideas, I think. And that snowball of creativity is thanks to all y'all. So I appreciate everybody hanging out here, regardless of donating over there or not. Just know that you are tangibly, actively, physically making things happen for me that I cannot thank you enough for. So yeah, literally changing my life and allowing me to spend part of my week on this every week. And actually I'm filming this on the week I'm taking off because I have so much inventory to build, but I'm probably gonna do a video on one of the bags I'm making for the inventory because I've been noodling around with like mini bags and different than a mini bag I have made previously. But there's also a bunch of not mini bags. Like I finally figured out a good cinch dice bag pattern that I really like. And I don't know why it took me so long to figure out you have to have like intersecting strings to like get a tight closure at the top. I don't know where my brain was at before because I have certainly used bags that have that. I don't know if that's, I don't know if this gesture is making any sense, but once I show you how I've been making those bags, 
Hopefully that'll click better than me having really aggressive hand gestures. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully you also like how this project came out. I guess I didn't really assess how the result was and I am really happy with the time I took into doing the little finessing and doing all the detail. As of me filming this right now, I haven't stitched up the little thumb holes, but I'd imagine by the time I'm doing the like final product shots that that part will have been done. That's the only like outstanding piece that I have not completely 100% finished. I like how it's fitting. I like how just the colors look together. And I'm so excited about these pockets. It was so much easier to do than I was expecting, but is that not the case with so many fucking things? I have exhausted all of my brain power for the day, so I'm going to go grocery shopping, even though it's almost 5 p.m. and that is not the time of day where I would choose to go grocery shopping. My day got pushed back because of bees, so this is just how the rest of my summer's gonna be, I suspect. I hope you are all having a lovely end of your August. I personally cannot fucking wait for fall to be here, so I'm sorry to all you summer babies, but I am ready four crunchy leaves. I saw my first couple leaves turning and like one perfect leaf just fell onto the grass as I was walking Bert earlier today and it just made my heart swell with joy and I'm very excited about it. Honestly, it's worth tolerating winter to just get the fuck out of the hot months. I can't, I can't do it anymore. Okay, at least I made it through a whole video without bitching about how sweaty I am because it's, it's actually not that bad today. You're welcome. I will see you all back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Guess what? It's happening.